instruction books, Theremin enthusiasts have had to rely on YouTube videos by present-day practitioners touting their personal doctrine. It is awkward to play an instrument with emotional effect unless one is already au fait with the rudiments of getting a sound or note out. The theremin projects a continuous tone. The left hand juggles air over the volume antenna bringing you staccato and legato. In my first V-block, I talk about how mine is inverted. I introduced this concept at a recent lecture masterclass. Uh, on the loop antenna side is really where you articulate your phrase. The closer I am to the volume antenna, the louder it is. You can't get louder by thrusting your hand through the loop. You know, it doesn't work that way. The right hand will arrest pitch as accurately as possible using podamento and precise attacks. Remember that your hearing will be heavily taxed in this feedback loop that identifies how in tune you are so that your hand may make that millimeter adjustment before it's discernible to the audience. You realize you only have control over volume and pitch to create a meaningful performance and both hands must be engaged in a kind of dance with no other movement allowed. In my previous video blog, I mentioned the use of extended synth techniques in my live performance, where the technology is transparent to the audience but contributes a prepared canvas of opportunities to the player. Here are a couple of compositions where I've toyed with the inflections of the voice of the theremin, often mirroring the way I use the pitch bend and modulation wheels playing synth. In the first example, Isabel, the voice of the theremin is affected with a fuzzwa and played with an exaggerated pitch bend style of articulation. <laughs> The second is the outro to Frisson, where a move from synth to theremin evoking Jimmy Page in Whole Lot of Love. or not is often subjective. Ultimately, the intent of the composition depicted through a well-presented performance triumphs over opinion. <laughs>